Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if, Naruto gets married on his training trip, part 1. Subscribe if you enjoy the video. Let's start the story. Sasuke. That was the shout of a boy in his early 13s that was standing on a log across from said boy. He was dressed in a blindingly bright orange jumpsuit that just screamed kill me to anyone that saw it. It didn't help that his occupation was being a ninja, and he relied on stealth. He had blood red eyes with black slits in them, and wild blonde hair. The said boy across from the first was standing staring at the first. His name was Ichiha Sasuke, and his eyes were red with three times in each eye. He had on black pants and a white shirt also standing on a log not but 20 feet away from the other boy. Both boys had small cuts on each other and some dirt littering their clothes. Sasuke, I'll bring you back no matter what, even if I have to break every bone in your body. Sasuke just looked at him and snarled slightly. Naruto I won't go back, I can't go back, not anymore, and definitely not with you. He never broke eye contact with the other boy now known as Naruto when he spoke. Naruto was taken aback by that statement, but he took it the wrong way, and he was just about to yell at the other boy when he spoke up again, silencing him. Why would you go so far for Naruto? Why are you willing to risk your own life to save mine? He asked just above a whisper. Naruto actually recoiled at the statement, but let his fierce eyes soften somewhat. Sasuke. The other boy looked back up to him and made eye contact again. Ayu, you're the first person I've ever had a real bond with besides the old man. He told me honestly. You're my best and only friend in the village Sasuke. Sasuke's eyes widened slightly, but he nodded in understanding. I see you're my best friend too. With that he stood up from his sitting position he took on his log and reached into his pocket. Naruto tensed getting ready for another attack, but smiled when he saw what he brought out of his pocket. Sasuke grabbed his metal forehead protector and tied it around his forehead and secured it tightly like Naruto had his. Both had a symbol of a leaf on it, representing they were both Konoha ninja. But you're too late Naruto, I can't go back, especially if it's with you. What do you mean? Naruto asked, confused. Looking up Naruto saw something he didn't see much from the Stokichiha friend of his. He was smiling, but not one of his cocky smiles that he always got, but a real smile. It's because I know how the village would react if you brought me back half dead and beaten. He stated matter-of-factly. Naruto was confused for a second before realization dawned on him. Sasuke continued seeing the look of understanding. If you brought me back half dead the village would do one of two things that I can't allow to happen to you. One would be executed and the other would be exiled. Neither of which you can afford. Naruto grimaced as what he said was true no matter how much he didn't want it to be. I'm their precious last Ichiha, the last of my bloodline in Konoha. If I were to be hurt by the demon boy as they like to call you. Naruto's eyes widened hearing this. Sasuke saw this and smiled sadly. You really think I didn't notice all the hate you got in the village, I don't know why they hate you, but that doesn't really matter. The point is, if you come back with me half dead you will suffer gravely for hurting their precious Achiha in some way. That is the reason I'm going to win here. I can't afford to lose, not this time, for both of our health I'll win. Naruto stood there rooted to his spot as what Sasuke said washed over him. He had to admit, no matter how much it hurt, that he was right. He couldn't bring him back now. Not like this. I understand, but he couldn't even think properly right now, the facts were getting to him too much. Sasuke saw this. Naruto. Said boy looked up from his hands making eye contact one more time. Let's finish this right here, right now, our strongest attacks against each other. He said with a small smile. Naruto looked at him and didn't understand why he still wanted to fight, but then realized he wanted to end it with a bang and see who really could end up on top. Smiling his own little smile he replied in kind. Hi, yes, let's finish it. But that both jumped off their respective logs backwards about 30 feet, each landing on the water using chakra to stay on top of it. They both looked up and saw they were about 100 feet away from each other. They both nodded and started their attacks. Naruto put his hands in a ram seal and started to gather his chakra around him. Slowly a red chakra started to come up from his stomach area. This red substance started to bubble over and slowly cover his body in the red chakra substance. After a few seconds the chakra was covering his entire body from head to toe. The substance slowly started to form a shape around his body that eventually turned into a fox with one tail. His hair turned wilder, his blood red eyes seemed to get even redder, and his fingernails turned into claws. Naruto grunted as the process was over and slowly bent his knees because his body wanted to go on all fours, but he refused to fight like an animal. So he settled to fight with his knees slightly bent. After that was done Naruto held out his right hand and slowly small wisps of blue chakra started to form in his palm. This was his normal chakra and every second the chakra kept getting bigger and bigger until it was a flurry of blue chakra in his hand. 
Then the red chakra surrounding his body started to bubble and pop around the blue in his hand, and the blue chakra slowly took the form of a ball. This all happened in a couple of seconds. If one looked closely at the ball of chakra, they would see a solid outline with an inside of thousands of moving partials of chakra that made the ball shine brightly in his hand and hum lightly. After the nod for each other to start, Sasuke also went through a small transformation. The seal on his neck pulsed and slowly started to spread across his body showing flame-like tattoos moving across his body. In no time at all the seal covered his entire body and it started to change. The black markings started to expand slowly and cover his entire body. The first thing to visibly happen was his hair growing longer to about middle back and turning purple instead of the normal black it was. His fingernails turned into claws and he developed a cross on his nose. Then he grunted as he bent over slightly and two purple bat-like wings protruded out of his back. After his transformation was complete he formed four hand seals as fast as he could and gripped his right wrist with his left hand tightly. He pointed his hand downward and cupped it like he was holding a big ball. A spark went off in his hand and it slowly started to expand, getting larger and larger. A small spark turned into a lightning storm in his hand that covered his hand completely in electricity and formed a small ball of lightning. The ball of lightning was making a sound like a thousand birds chirping. After completing their transformation and their respective jutsus they both looked up at each other and stared in awe at the other's changes. That stunned look quickly changed to one of recognition of the other's power. With not but a small twitch of the lips as indicator, they both leapt at each other, throwing their attacks that were in their right hands behind them. Both jumped straight into the air propelled so fast by their new powered up bodies that it was nothing but a blur to anyone below a high chun level ninja, but to them, it was like they were both going in slow motion. They both stared each other in the eyes the entire way until they were right on each other. Not but five feet away from the other boy, they both threw all their might into their right arms and thrust them forward as fast and hard as they could. Dodori. Thousand birds, Sasuke yelled. Rasengan. Spiraling sphere, Naruto yelled while still staring right into the other boy's eyes. The two attacks collided with a resounding shockwave that rippled across the entire lake, creating waves two feet high, starting from where they met. Both boys saw their attack hit each other and felt the shock wave, but ignored it to focus on their attacks. Sasuke's lightning ball was piercing Naruto's grinding sphere. Without hesitation they both knew this was the last attack, so they both poured as much chakra into their attacks as they could. Gritting their teeth they forced their attacks harder onto each other. What happened after that was a shockwave of such magnitude that the entire water in the lake they were standing on parted in a circle around the two boys that were suspended in midair by their jutsus clashing. The two attacks seemed to melt together into one and form a ball of chakra that turned pure black in color and expanded around them engulfing them in the attack also. The sphere of pitch black chakra grew to several times their size and ended just a few short seconds after it started. Inside the sphere both boys put the last of their chakra into their attacks that at this point had all but dissipated and sent their attacks at the other's shoulder area. Both gritted their teeth in agony as they both hit the mark dead on. When the sphere finally dissipated a new island had formed where Sasuke was standing over the nearly unconscious Naruto holding his left shoulder where you could see shredded skin. At his feet Naruto's shoulder was pierced an inch deep. Falling to his knees he stared at his best friend and somehow knew he would be okay, no better than okay, he would be great. With this feeling in mind he stood on shaky legs and limped towards the fire border that separated fire country from grass country. Just out of earshot though he stopped and turned his head facing Naruto with a real smile on his face. Naruto I don't know if you can hear me or not, but that was one hell of a fight and only you deserve the title of my best friend and greatest rival. I know our paths will cross again and when they do I look forward to that day brother. He was just about to turn around when he heard a voice just above that of a whisper, but he heard it nonetheless and looked towards the boy he considered a brother and saw him staring at him with deep blue eyes. As do I brother and next time I'll be stronger than you, you can count on that. With that Naruto turned his head and stared up at the sky that was starting to rain. Sasuke smiled again and grunted in acknowledgement that he heard him. Turning around again he headed to the sound village and away from his newfound brother and Konoha. Naruto stared at the ceiling in irritation, no, that wasn't a word to describe how he felt, he felt betrayed, scorned, and hated, and all in all he felt lonely. You see he was at the one place he hated above all else, a hospital, they just brought back many memories of when he was a kid and getting beat by the villagers and ended up in the hospital more times than not. I can't believe it's been two weeks and only three people have visited me. Naruto's voice was laced in barely contained malice and hate, even though he was talking to no one in particular but himself. He's been in the hospital for two weeks and during that time he can honestly say he has been getting angrier and angrier with himself and the others in the village. 
The only people to have actually come and visited him were Tsunade, Shizun, and Jiraiya. Tsunade came in immediately when she was done with the other people that got here before him. Supposedly the other people in his rescue group were injured fighting their opponents of none other than the Sound 4 or 5, if you considered that bone using free keyfrot briefly. After that first checkup at which point he was unconscious from exhaustion, she had only visited two other times. One was when he woke up and that only lasted for about 10 minutes, while well, she did many different tests to see if he was okay. The other time was also just a checkup. You see she was the only one that was willing to work on him without a threat used. And if one was used then you couldn't guarantee that the friendly doctor wouldn't try to hurt the weakened demon of Konoha. So she was the only one that looked at him and took care of him while in the hospital. Then there was Shizun, Tsunade's assistant and apprentice. She only came on the first day to see if he was okay or not. After that he hasn't seen her once, actually he didn't see her at all seeing, as he was unconscious at the time, the only reason he even knew was because of Tsunade telling him such. Then there was one of his senseis, Jiraiya of the Sanin. He was the person that trained him when his other sensei refused to do so during the month break between the Chunin finals. The only reason he visited was to check up on him and tell him that they were leaving the village for two and a half years for a training trip. When he thought about him being his sensei though he got irritated. It is true that he learned how to summon toads in that month break, but he didn't do any actual training with him. He just had him sign the summoning contract and then told him to practice it. Then when he couldn't get it by himself with any help from him, he threw him off a cliff. Why? To forcefully draw out the Kaiubi's chakra from within him with a life and death situation. It worked needless to say, but it still wasn't right of him to put his life in danger like that. Then when they went to find Tsunade to be the new Hokage, he taught him how to do the Rasengan. One of two jutsus that made the fourth Hokage of the village hidden in the leaves, his village, famous throughout the world. He was grateful for the, but again all he did was teach him three of the necessary steps to doing the, and left him to himself. If that was the type of training he would get from him on this training trip he was contemplating if he should even go or not. Then there's the fact that he taught him the Rasengan and the summoning for toads. Those were both jutsus the fourth used and was known for. Contrary to popular belief he was rather smart. He just hid behind a mask of idiocy. So why would a Sanin, one of three of the strongest people to ever come out of Konoha, want to train him, an orphan, and why would he be teaching all these jutsus that only the fourth and he could use? Something didn't add up, but he just couldn't figure out what it was right now. Is there anyone that actually cares about the real me and not my fake actions I show the villagers? I know Sasuke does, but come on, is that the only person? Naruto asked himself in anger. Speaking of his fake actions of idiocy, only two people in the entire village full of ninja of all ranks and powers had ever figured out that he wasn't a moron and only acted that way to survive. Really, was it that hard to figure out it was all an act? One was the third Hokage, the Sandame, God of Shinobi, or his Oji San. Old man, these were all titles he went by. He knew right away that he created fake actions and emotions not, but two days after he created them. But for some reason he never mentioned it around him or even seemed concerned that he had put up fake emotions to get by in everyday life. He supposed the third thought it was to help him cope with all the hate he got in the village. Whenever he was by himself or with just Sasuke he would act differently, it was subtle, but there was definitely a difference in the way he acted around others and when he was by himself. For one he would never smile for no reason or show a goofy grin and he would think things through slightly more instead of just blurting out the first thing that came to mind. If he had a choice he wouldn't wear all orange, the only reason he did was the stores charged him double or more for his clothing and it added to his show of idiocy. He was slightly smarter than he let on, he was no genius by any means, but he could pass his test with at least average or slightly above scores. He stopped trying to be good at the academy though after the first week of the first year. The first week he was in the top markers and then he went down to the bottom of the class from then on. It wasn't his fault though seeing as the teachers gave him different tests and altered books to learn from. It was at that time around his sixth birthday that he learned people would leave him alone more if he acted slightly differently than he normally would. If he acted less smart and more impulsive people tended to ignore him more and take him less seriously. If people took him less seriously it allowed him to get away with more small things that would have caused more trouble than it was worth. Beside Saratobi, the only other person to figure out the fake actions was the reason he was in the hospital. He didn't blame him for putting him in there though. He was the only one who knew the real reason he left the village, and it wasn't because he needed power or the fact he just couldn't take all the false praise he was getting from the stupid villagers, even though those did add some motive to leave. He wanted to be known as Sasuke and get credit for his own accomplishments, not for his last name and what his family did. Sasuke had his reasons, and it wasn't what most thought they were, in fact they were rather deeply rooted into the very foundation of Konoha and who ran the village whether it was in public or not. He still remembered the day like it was yesterday. 
Naruto had just gotten out of the academy for the day and was running alone down the street laughing happily when Sasuke ran up to him and yelled for him to wait up. He really didn't know why he stopped, but he did. It was a good thing he did, as that was the start of a weird friendship that would bloom into something that later would become best friends and brothers. After stopping him, Sasuke asked something that startled him to the core. He asked why he acted the way he did around everyone else. He tried to cover it up with a nervous laugh, but all he got was a pointed stare in return. After trying to avoid him by running away and that not working, he finally just told him in a voice filled with some hate and eyes that he was sure Sasuke remembered to this day. His eyes were as cold as ice when he spoke and his voice was no better. To live in this village I have to be an idiot to survive. He left the sentence hanging in the air and simply walked away. He remembers saying the word village with such disdain that out of the corner of his eyes, he saw Sasuke give a violent shiver. Since then he had always had a weird friendship with him. He knew there was a bond there though, and over the time they knew each other in the academy, they slowly went from companions to friendship to best friends. This was all in secret of course, as they couldn't be real friends to the public knowledge with him being the demon and all, and Sasuke their precious last -a Then there's his team, if you could call it that. Ever since graduating from the academy and becoming a genin of the village, everyone in the graduating class was put into a team of three new genin and one jounin instructor. This wasn't too bad at first seeing, as Sasuke, his secret best friend was in his team with another girl known as Sakura, his supposed crush that he has on her is a complete lie, just another part of his fake emotions and actions. Who in their right mind would honestly like a girl that you can't even be around and not worry about being hit in the head for just talking to her. Honestly, whenever he even speaks to her she just says something along the lines of you're bugging me and stop interrupting Sasuke and me. How she thinks he could interrupt a one-sided conversation between Sasuke and her was very confusing seeing as Sasuke never talked to her except for the few occasions when he told her she was lying and to shut up. She has this huge crush on the boy even though he treats her like crap and then when he tries to talk to her, she takes out her frustration on him. No, he didn't like the pink-haired girl one bit. Then there's his supposed sensei, Hada Kakashi. He would sooner call Jiraiya sensei than that asshole. Why you might ask? That is quite simple. Haddock has been Team 7 Sensei for roughly 6 months now, and he has only learned one thing from him in that entire time. How to climb a tree with only using your feet and chakra to stick to it. He learned from the others that graduated and became genin in their year that they learned how to do this exercise a week after they graduated. It took their sensei 2 months to teach it to them. Then after he does teach it to him, they learn nothing else from the man, well he personally didn't learn anything else that is. He knew for a fact, as Sasuke told him so, that Haddock was teaching Sasuke in private. That pissed him off to no end, he was happy for his friend, but still. Haddock's personal motto that he goes by is a contradiction to what he says and does. He can still remember the exact words he used when he told them his motto. Those who break the rules are trash, but those who leave their friends behind are worse than trash. If he truly believed in these words then he wouldn't play favorites with his students and treat his team like trash. Then there's the fact he is late every single day for two hours. In that two hours of waiting time they waste every day, they could be training or doing missions to earn some money, as not all of them are financially stable like him. Sasuke had his family fortune, Kakashi had his money saved up from many missions, and Sakura had her parents supporting her ass. He has to live by the money he gets from missions to get by every day. No, he didn't like his team one bit. Then there were his supposed friends or at least companions he thought he had in the village. There's all the rookie nine and then maybe team guy that he has gotten to know over the years. He thought they would have at least sent him something as a warming gift while he was in the hospital to say that they knew he was in there and to get well soon or something. But he hasn't even heard a peep out of them yet. Two weeks and not one single person of his supposed friends have come and seen him. The longer he thought over these startling facts the more angry he got. He almost wished he would have gone with Sasuke, but then again he wouldn't have gotten anywhere in the Sound Village. Not with Orochimaru fearing his influence on Sasuke and the Curse Seal. He knew he didn't want to stay in this village any longer either, and if he tried to run he knew he would be captured within hours of his escape and executed for treason. So his only option was to leave the village with Jureya of the Sanin and hope he could get some decent training from the man, and if not, then hopefully ditch him in some town and live somewhere far away from Kanoha. Having spent an hour thinking over possible plans for the future he turned over on his bed and fell asleep with a small smile of knowing he would be out of the village in a day's time. That day came too slowly for Naruto, but he waited passionately for it to come. When his new sensei came to pick him up he said nothing to him but a small greeting and let's go already brat. As they were leaving the village gates he looked over his shoulder at the village he's lived in his entire life, looking for any goodbyes from the people he knew. He could see no one anywhere. 
he wasn't surprised really, and that just made his resolve to leave the village even higher than before. Walking slightly faster than before he walked past a casually paced man known as Jiraiya and hopped into the trees and ran as fast and far away as his small body would let him. Jiraiya followed right behind him yelling for him to slow down as they didn't need to rush, but his pleas fell to deaf ears as Naruto ignored him and kept running into the unknown. From her personal room in the top of the Hokage's tower, Tsunade, once one of the Sanin and now the Hokage, looked out the window at the specks that were Jiraiya and Naruto leaving the village in a hurry. She smiled sadly as they left her view and the village to travel around and train. Come back soon Naruto, the village needs you although nobody heard her, the words seemed to drift into the air and out the window to be forever lost in time. Do you see that? What are you talking about? The person who just spoke turned to his longtime friend and frowned in curiosity. He turned his head in the direction that his friend was squinting at and he himself squinted his eyes to get a better look into the distance. After a few short seconds of focus he could just make out two sellouts in the distance heading their way. Letting his senses travel through him he gauged their chakra levels to see how much of a threat they were to them. They couldn't be that much trouble seeing as they were walking calmly and ride on the wide open path, so they weren't trying to be sneaky, which was a good sign they were at least friendly to the village. After checking their chakra levels he let out a small breath of realization. His friend hearing this turned to him with a questioning glance. Seeing the look he elaborated. They both have Gen and level chakra signatures and are no real threat to us, but be on guard nonetheless. His friend nodded in understanding and stood slightly more alert in front of the gates of Konoha. In no time at all the two guards at the gate could finally make out what the people were wearing and assess their threat level more accurately. The taller of the two was around 6 feet 4 inches, around 50 years old, and had spiky white hair. He had a curious headband that had the symbol for oil on it. His face had two red lines going down from each eye to his cheekbones. He was wearing a grey kimono with a red vest over that with fishnet armor underneath it all. After their close observations they knew instantly that this man was Jureya of the Sanin. His chakra level signature was being suppressed most likely due to his skills. After identifying the first one they turned to the other person. Walking at an even pace with Jureya was a man just under 6 feet tall. He had black shinobi pants with black boots. His upper torso was all black also. The distinct thing about his clothes though was all the red running around his body. As they kept walking closer they could finally see what those red lines were. At closer inspection they saw them to be red lightning bolts running across his entire black clothed body in a very fashionable and mysterious way. After inspecting his clothes better they looked at his face. His face was angular with perfection, the lady's killer if they ever saw one. Smooth skin untarnished with scars. His hair was vibrant blonde with red streaks running through it. The hair was framing the sides of his face slightly and in the back went down to his middle neck. On his left leg they could make out a kunai pouch, and on his back they could see a katana handle protruding from his back with a red hilt with the same red lightning running the handle. This guy was producing genin level chakra also, but he looked much more dangerous than any genin could look, and it was mysterious that his chakra level was the exact same level Jiraiya's was. When they finally made it to the gate they both stopped in front of the guards waiting for them to open the gates and let them in. The two guards finally snapped out of it to do their respective jobs. Straightening up they addressed the two waiting men in front of them. State your name and reason for entry in Kanoha please. The first guard asked with a guarded voice. He knew who one of these men was, but the other was a complete mystery to him. Gureya seemed to beam at the question asked and went into a weird dance that involved him doing silly poses and ended with him summoning a frog that he was standing on with yet another silly pose. This served two purposes for the guards. One it showed that Jureya was still very weird when he wanted to be, and the other was it proved he was the Toad Sanin, as only him and Naruto could summon toads at this time. After shaking their heads at the sad excuse for an introduction that was supposed to be cool, they greeted him in kind. It's a pleasure to see you back after two and a half years, Jureya-sama. You may enter the village. The other told him with a nod of the head. Jureya nodded back and proceeded into the village. They turned back to the other man to see he was still standing there like nothing had happened at all. Now that they thought about it silently in their head, they didn't even see him blink the entire time Jureya was doing his weird introduction, he just stared right past them at some invisible entity in space and time. And who are you? They asked the stranger. The new person continued to look off into space for a few seconds, and just as they were about to ask if he heard him or not, he turned his eyes to theirs. They were instantly on full alert. The eyes of the young man now that they could see him properly, as they noticed he couldn't be more than 16 years old at the time, were sky blue emeralds in color. But that wasn't what got them on guard, it was the intensity of his eyes. They were the eyes of a person that had been killed many times before, cold, calculating eyes that sent shivers up people's spines to even the most experienced of chunins, as they were finding out just now. 
After staring at them for no more than two seconds, he just started to walk by them. They could do nothing but follow his movements as they knew on an instinctual level, which comes from years of training, that if they moved in a treating way they would be dead in minutes or even seconds possibly. Just as the young man was passing them and entering the village with now open gates, he spoke in a voice, as chilling, as ice. Uzumaki rage in Naruto. That was all he said as he passed. He didn't turn his head to address them when he passed, he just stared straight ahead the whole time and never broke his slow stride into the village. By the time the guards shook the chill from their bodies and turned to look at the person that left with the toad San and two and a half years ago to train, they noticed that they were both a good hundred feet into the village. Turning to each other, they looked at the other to see if they heard correctly or not. They were both shaken by the way he addressed them with such cold indifference that they noticed the other guard had small beads of sweat on their forehead. Did he say Uzumaki Naruto? One of them asked shakily. The other could only nod in response, more shocked than scared to say anything. Wasn't he the loud-mouthed brat that left a few years back to train? Again all he got was a nod in return. These changed. That was a huge understatement. Changed. That is a complete 180 degree personality change. The boy I remember was a cheerful genin. He had the title of the number one hyperactive knucklehead prankster before. That man was a cold heart in Jounin if I ever saw one. The other finally responded in his shock. You really think he's Jounin level? The other just looked at him with disbelief. You're kidding right? Seeing the look he was getting he saw he wasn't kidding. No, a person with that sort of aura has to be at least high Chunin if not even higher in skill. The other saw no reason to argue with that fact, as he could very well see that could be true. As Naruto and Jiraiya walked down the road they took in the sights. Every which way they turned they could see that the village hadn't really changed that much from when they left. As they passed the concession stands people would greet Jiraiya with happy smiles and he would return them with an equal or even bigger smile. The people would just look weird at Naruto, as if they didn't recognize him though. That changed rather fast, as a person came running up from behind them with a frantic look on his face, from the same way they just came from, and started to whisper to the civilians around him. The looks of the people they passed by changed in a heartbeat when they heard what the man said. Both Jiraiya and Naruto ignored this though. That is until they couldn't ignore it anymore when a person that was selling apples at a stand picked one up and threw it at Naruto from right in front of him, while yelling two words. Demon scrum. Jiraiya looked at the man like he had a death wish, which he probably did, but he didn't try to stop him. He watched as the pitiful man in his early 50s threw the apple right past him to the person walking just slightly behind him. He followed the path the apple took and saw it heading for the uncaring Naruto. Just as it got within a foot of him Naruto swiped the apple from the air with his hand and crushed it with his bare hands like it was nothing. He never took his eyes off the path he was heading and never broke stride. To everyone around them it just looked like the apple disappeared, but to the Chunin and above in the crowd they knew better. Naruto moved too fast for the civilians to see him, but they caught the movement he made with skilled ease. Naruto kept walking like nothing happened, heading for the fool that was now on the ground with a yellow stain in his pants shaking in fear. He was in that position because the second he caught the apple and destroyed it, he also sent a concentrated dose of killer intent at the man. He absentmindedly noticed that he wasn't the only one either. From what he could tell there were at least 12 other killer intents being directed at the man from the ninja in the area. Dealing another ninja defending him caused him to glance around himself more fully. What he saw surprised him some. Besides the ninja hidden in the crowd or not so hidden in some cases, he also saw the civilians. That's what shocked him mildly. For they weren't glaring at him like they used to, but instead was glaring at the man that threw the apple. The ones that weren't glaring at the man were sending apologetic glances his way and the others just looked on neutrally. Overall it was a major change from when he left the village to now. All this put together had the effect of scaring the man to the point of wetting himself and falling on his ass trying to get away by crawling on his hands and knees. Naruto saw all this and his neutral expression never changed once the entire time while he kept walking like nothing happened. Just as he was about to pass the man up, he pushed his hand to the side and pointed two fingers at the scared man that was the universal hand sign for A. His left arm was extended with his pointer and middle finger outstretched at the cowering man. Just then Jiraiya put a hand on his shoulder from behind as he stopped to see what he would do to the sad excuse for a man. Naruto turned his head slightly already knowing who it was that stopped him. Jiraiya shook his head in the negative with a sad look in his eyes. Naruto just stared at the drowned man for no more than a second before lowering his hand and continuing to walk ahead like nothing had happened at all after shaking off the hand with a small shrug of his shoulders. Jiraiya could only watch his wayward student longingly and sigh in what many would think was frustration but was really grief. Around halfway to the Hokage Tower they ran into some familiar people. Just as they were rounding the corner to go down another street, Sirotobi Kanohimaru and Haruno Sakura came around the corner and nearly bumped into them. 
Naruto and Jiraiya didn't even move, flinch or make any reaction whatsoever, as they both knew they were right there around the corner, heading the same way they were. So they weren't that surprised to see them. The other two were another story though. They were startled and nearly bumped into the two people standing in front of them. They looked up after backing up a bit and looked at the two men. They both instantly knew who Jiraiya was, as they've both seen him before, and he hasn't changed that much over time. The other man thought they didn't recognize. He did look familiar to them both, but it still escaped them. Inohimaru was the first one to recognize him. With eyes widening slightly, he tentatively asked the question on his mind. I is that you Naruto Nisan? Big brother. Naruto just looked at him for a few seconds, then nodded in the affirmative. Hello Okinohimaru. He may have greeted him, but there was no enthusiasm in his voice present at all. Said boy frowned at this, but it was gone so fast most missed it. Shaking in excitement he launched into a million questions, all of which were never answered because he was talking too fast and wouldn't give Naruto time to answer even if he wanted to. Sakura frowned when she heard what Kanohimaru said and took a closer look at the young man she admitted was hot. Let's see. She thought. He has the same blonde hair, but with red streaks in it, same color eyes, but scarier. She shivered involuntarily just looking into them. His whisker scar marks are gone though, that is a definite trait of Naruto. If this is him, then he has gotten a lot taller to damn really tall. And he's not wearing that disgusting eye of orange he used to wear all the time. This Naruto wears all black with some red, and damn he looks good in it. She blushed at her own thoughts on this person, but then got suspicious, this couldn't be the idiot Naruto she knew. Are you really Naruto? She asked incredulously. Naruto just glanced at her out of the corner of his eyes, as he was facing Konohimaru, and turned his attention back to him. Sakura bristled at being ignored. If this was Naruto then he definitely would never ignore her. He had a huge crush on her before he left the village. This can't be Naruto Baka. Idiot, who is this impostor? She raged inside her head. She was brought out of her thoughts when the man imposing as Naruto and Jiraiya started to walk away. Just then she remembered something Tsunade said to her that made her thoughts race. She remembered the words as if they were spoken to her that very same day. Naruto left on a two and a half year training trip with Jiraiya of the Sanin. He won't be returning until then. Eyes widening with realization she turned back to the present again. Naruto, wait. She yelled after him. Said young man stopped walking, but didn't turn around when he addressed her. What do you need, Haruno? That one small sentence shocked her to the core. She just stood there rooted to the spot with a dumb look on her face while she had an inner conflict. He he called me by my L last name. Then he didn't add chance she thought frantically. She was brought out of her thoughts when she felt a pressure squeeze her shoulder. Looking up she saw it was Jiraiya that brought her back to reality this time, and he was shaking his head from side to side telling her to leave it be. Looking back to where Naruto used to stand she saw him already halfway down the street walking away without so much as a hello to her after such a long time of being separated. Looking up again with confusion and sadness clearly in her eyes, she silently asked Jiraiya what was wrong with Naruto. Jiraiya understood this with ease. I can't tell you anything Sakura, I'm sorry. But Jiraiya-sama. She never got to finish, as he just shook his head no again. I'm sorry, but I truly can't tell you anything. I'll see you around. With that he followed Naruto down the street, easily catching up with him at the walking pace they were going, leaving a distressed girl to wonder what happened to her long-lost friend. Come in. A strong woman's voice commanded from inside the room. As soon as the door opened Jiraiya knew who it was that sat in front of him behind a huge desk which was full of stacks of paperwork. Tsunade, long time no see. The woman at the desk looked up when she heard the voice she knew so well. She was a woman in her late fifties, but a person looking at her would never know that because of the complex jinjutsu that hit a real figure. Nonetheless she had blonde hair through and through, with the largest chest anyone could ever see. The instant she heard the voice she stopped what she was doing and looked up seeing her old teammate stand in the doorway looking at her lecherously. She resisted the urge to get up and slam him through the wall like she normally would see, as she was looking past him for what she really wanted to see. When she couldn't find her objective she returned to her old teammate with a frown on her face. Where's Naruto? Was the first and only thing she asked, completely tossing the fact that she hasn't seen him for over two years out the window. Ah come on Tsunade, is that all you have to say to me after all this time? He joked around knowing she only wanted to see Naruto right now. Tsunade looked at him for all but two seconds before grounding out in a dangerously low voice. Where is Naruto? I'm right here Hokage-sama. A voice said coming in through the same door as Jiraiya just did and closing the door behind him. Tsunade looked behind Jiraiya again and the second her eyes landed on his figure she let out a small gasp. Eyes that you Naruto? She stuttered out incredulously. Naruto looked at her with a nod. Hi Hokage-sama. He responded right away. Frowning at the respectfulness she was getting, she took in his entire appearance. 
She notices right away that the trip did some good for him, as it got rid of that disgusting orange outfit he used to wear. Now if she was honest with herself, she'd say he was a lady's killer, if the slight muscle she could see underneath the somewhat loose pants and shirt he was wearing now was any giveaway. She also noticed right away that his whisker marks were gone, and then his eyes had changed. Going lower she was just about to look and see what kinds of weapons he was hiding on him when she snapped her head back up to his eyes. But Kami-sama, God, his eyes are as hard as steel and as cold as ice. She noticed with a start. Turning to Jiraiya to explain, she caught his eye with a small glare and all he did was turn his head away with a grimace. That's not a good sign. She thought absentmindedly while her smile turned into a frown. How was your training trip Naruto? Naruto looked her dead in the eyes with his icebergs he called eyes now and she suppressed a shudder. Eventful, Hokage-sama. She frowned even more at the honorific he added to her title. She didn't want him to even use her title as leader of the village, let alone such an honorary title. Naruto, please call me Tsunade. As you wish, Tsunade-sama. He replied in his chilling voice with very little emotion mixed in, but if you listened hard enough you could hear some warmness in it when he was speaking to her. Her frown was etched into her face now as she stared at him trying to understand why he was so different now than when he left. When Naruto didn't break her eye contact for a good 20 seconds she decided it was a lost cause and took a closer look at his body again. She saw the sword and assumed he knew how to use it properly, seeing as he was carrying it out in the open. She saw the two kunai pouches on both of his legs for his throwing weapons and if she wasn't mistaken, she saw a scroll on his belt before it was blocked again by his cloak. Moving along his body again she saw he was very well muscled now. She absent-mindedly noted it was the same muscle mass as a high jounin would have her even better. Then something caught her eye that made her do a double take. There on his left hand, ring finger was a wedding ring of complete gold. Once she saw this she could do nothing but stare at it for several seconds with her brain, trying to process the fact that Naruto must have been married when he was away. If she would have gotten a closer look at the ring, she would have noticed a slight indent in the shape of a lightning bolt carving into it. Shaking her head to clear her thoughts she looked back up into his eyes to see he never took his eyes off of her. It unnerved her somewhat to be stared at by those frosty eyes. Turning around in her chair because she couldn't take a long look into his eyes and not cry, she addressed the young man that was now standing behind her back. You must have had a long trip back to Konoha and you're probably tired. You may leave Naruto. She said in a shaky voice. Said person just looked at her for a few more seconds before turning on his heels and heading for the stop as he opened the door and turned his head slightly in her direction so he could see her chair out of the corner of his eyes. Tsunade Sama, if you wanted to know what happened all you had to do was ask. With that he walked out of the door and closed it behind him. The second Tsunade heard him finish she swirled in her chair with unshed tears in the corner of his eyes searching for Naruto, but he was already gone. Damn brat, but I can't really blame him. Jiraiya said sadly from the wall he was leaning against. Tsunade noticed he was still in the room and quickly wiped her eyes of her tears. What happened to him, Jiraiya? Said man easily noticed the shaky voice she had and her trying to get rid of the tears. Sighing he pushed off the wall and moved over to a chair in front of her desk and sat down heavily. Do you have the silencing seals up? Was the first thing he asked, much to her frustration. She frowned and pushed some chakra into the wall behind her and it glowed slightly, indicating that the walls were soundproofed already. Not that the room needed it seeing, as it was designed to be soundproof to begin with. Most of the time there was a vent open, so the Anbu could hear if something was happening inside and needed to protect her, but that was shut already after a quick check. Nodding after seeing that everything was in order she turned back to him expectantly. Seeing this he sighed one final time and sat up straighter. What would you like to know first? Thinking for only a split second she went to her main concern. I noticed he had a wedding ring on, if that is the case, then he's married. Where's his wife for starters? After that, tell me everything that happened. The second the word wedding ring was said Tsunade knew something bad had happened as she saw Jureya visually flinch and then slump in his chair. Gathering his wits he started to explain what happened over the last two and a half years they were away from the village. That's the main reason he's like the way he is. He trailed off, not sure how to go about explaining things without him getting thrown through the wall and a straight line trip to the hospital. Explain. Tsunade ground out in worry. Her name was Akara, they fell in love and he just couldn't do it. He was choking on his own words. Healing dread came to the surface of her thoughts, Tsunade asked quietly for him to continue. And, looking more tired than she had seen him in a sense 15 years ago, when Arachimaru turned Nuke Nin, he answered. She died in a battle after being married for a little over five months. Hearing a choked sob he looked up to see her staring at him with unshed tears in her eyes, again with a pained expression on her face. How long did they know each other before that? She asked, dreading the answer she would get, but she needed to know. A little over a year and seven months. 
That was all it took for Tsune to stiffen like a board and feel the dread come to the surface full force. I see. There was an uncomfortable silence that lasted well over a minute until Tsune shakily asked what she knew she would dread to hear. And no I need to know the whole story, Jiraiya. She said resolutely knowing it would be a sad story to hear, especially after what she just found out. She thought of Naruto as a sort of little brother at times, and to know he went through such a sad thing after his already crappy life in the village made her feel untold sadness for him. Hi, I know. He started with a shaky breath. Gathering his wits he looked up ready to explain the whole thing. Try not to interrupt unless you have to, okay? She could only nod as he got ready. After we left the village Naruto was different, I guess would be the best word to describe it. He was no longer the hyperactive brat we once knew. He was a world colder. He refused to even think about Konoha or anything to do with his former team. I tried to talk to him on many occasions to get him to cheer up, as I thought he was still disappointed about losing to Sasuke and letting him escape. It turned out that every time I even mentioned Konoha or his former team, he would just turn silent and plain out ignore me for the rest of the day. The only thing I got out of him was the fact that he still thought of Sasuke as a brother. He would still take instructions when it came for training, but besides that he acted like he didn't hear me. So I let the subject drop after the first few days. Then by the time the first week ended I was starting to get worried. He would do non-stop training every single day. It didn't matter what I told him, he would train for a minimum of 10 hours a day. But more than likely he would train for the entire day non-stop, no matter how bad for his body that was. He would only eat his 3 meals a day and sleep for 8 hours, then train again every waking second. I figured maybe I could get him to stop the absurd training he was putting himself through if maybe I advanced his training ahead of time to when I planned to teach him how to control the Kyubi's chakra. I'll never forget the look he gave me that day. It was of pure loathing and hate. He absolutely refused to use the Kyubi's chakra even to summon, though he knew he couldn't summon Gamabunta without the fox's chakra, he still refused to ever use its chakra again. He told me he would rather die than rely on the damned fox. After a lot of pushing and still he wouldn't budge, I gave up on that too and started working on his chakra control and tojutsu. This is how his training continued for two whole months. By this time we had managed to move to our first stop which was Lightning Country. When we got there we stopped for camp and Naruto continued to do his intense training regimen that he refused to lower by any means. At this time I was really starting to worry about the boy. He was draining himself both mentally and physically of what he was doing. When we stopped in the camp that is where everything changed for us. He stopped here to collect his thoughts, and, as he was doing so he noticed he had Tsunade's complete attention. It was around 2 o'clock in the afternoon when we started to hear explosions and fighting on a small scale. After 20 minutes of hearing this and it only getting louder we went to investigate what the noise was. When we got there we saw a young girl of 13 years of age, the same age as Naruto was at that time, training with a sword and lightning manipulation. I instantly knew this was either a cloud ninja or one of its clans that surrounded the area. When we entered the training field she stopped training and asked who we were. We told her and we learned she wasn't a ninja but a samurai in training from outside the cloud village. After our small introductions we left but Naruto couldn't resist and returned to watch. Eventually she asked him what he was doing and he just told her he was fascinated on how she could control lightning. I can tell you this right now, her clan can control lightning with ease, if any one of their clan's men were to challenge another lightning user, they would easily win in skill. This little fact startled her. That much control of lightning was impressive for anyone, as lightning and wind elemental manipulation were the hardest element to control. I can see you understand the implications of that little fact. Yes they were masters in the art of lightning manipulation. Anyways, Naruto was fascinated by the way she could control lightning, and after the third day of watching her train, I still don't know why she kept coming back to the clearing, seeing as we were still there watching her. She offered to give Naruto some tips on the skills she knew. I could tell if she were a ninja that she would be easily high chunin in skill, so I encouraged Naruto to go train with her. She was all samurai at this point, but with some major skills that could easily match a ninja's. It also helped Naruto, as he didn't focus so much on what happened before we left, and he started to really take his training in the right direction, instead of just hurting himself like he was before. It goes without saying that this started something that no one would have seen coming. After that day Naruto still trained until he dropped, but at least now he was training in something useful instead of just his physical health. I spied on them a couple of times, but I mostly left them alone to train while I did other things. He trailed off lamely looking up expecting to get yelled at, but all he got was a mild glare and a gesture to continue the story. He sighed in relief for her wanting to know as much as she could about the trip before she killed him. He winced in phantom pain at what was sure to come later on, but he continued nonetheless. Every day he would go to that clearing to see if she was there or not. 
when she was he would stay with her and train every day non-stop, only stopping when she got hungry, and then they would go get something in a nearby town or catch their own food. When she wasn't there, which was only twice a week, Naruto would train with me. I mostly worked on his chakra control and a few lower level jutsus. He wasn't very happy about that either. That's beside the point though. After a month of this continuing, Naruto was finally showing some aptitude at lightning manipulation. He could make a spark on his hand and hold it for a few minutes. It was nothing compared to her control, but it was still impressive for a beginner. That's when things started to change for Naruto. He really started to spend time with Akara, for real though. It wasn't just training like before. They started to actually talk about other things besides jutsus and fighting. They started to fall for each other in a way. When that month finally passed Akara made an offer for Naruto. She asked him if he wanted to come back to her clan house. I didn't find out about this until the next afternoon. When they went to her clan house she offered him the opportunity to learn their clan's secret techniques and styles. I was shocked to hear of this, as I'm sure you are yourself. No clan in their right mind would willingly give away their secrets, but it turned out Akara was the clan head's daughter, and she personally requested Naruto be allowed this opportunity. They later made some sort of deal that I have no idea about to this day, but they allowed him to learn their secrets after this. That same day, they made some sort of blood contract to seal the deal. After doing this, they took Naruto to have his chakra changed. I don't know how they were able to do it, but they managed to change his nature. After we initially left the village, I had Naruto tested on his elemental nature, it was wind. This alone shocked me later on by the fact he was able to do even a small amount of lightning manipulation, seeing as wind and lightning are complete opposites. Somehow they were able to change his natural affinity for wind and turn it into lightning. I have absolutely no idea how they did this, but they did it successfully. This ritual they used had some side effects though. What sort of side effects? Tsunade questioned after a lengthy pause. Gureya seemed to come out of his haze and continued with a shake of his head. Right, besides the obvious lightning manipulation being his main element now, it also increased his normal chakra reserves by at least twofold. I learned later after I looked him over in his sleep for any side effects of the ritual that a part of the seal holding Kaiubi at bay was broken. Tsunade let out a gasp, but Jureya just waved her off before she could even say anything. The Kaiubi is still completely locked away and has no chance of escaping, so there is no need to worry. Besides, the side effect was a benefit to Naruto not a hindrance. It gave Naruto twice the amount of chakra by converting Kaiubi's chakra into his own somehow, and it also heightened his senses. The ones it affected were his sight and hearing. His sight changed so he can see everything in the night like it was the day, and his hearing increased by double. His hearing is now on par with any Inuzuka in the village. Now if you didn't know already, when we left Naruto's chakra reserves were already mid Jounin level. Well after the increase his level shot up low to mid Sanin level. This also had the side effect of making his already horrid chakra control even more horrendous than it already was. I personally believe that it would have been better if that little party never happened, seeing as it made his training harder than it should have been for a while. It was more of a setback than anything. When I came looking for Naruto the next day because he didn't come back to camp like he sometimes does, I found him lying in the field looking exhausted with a car sitting not 5 feet away from him. Before you even ask why I didn't look for him before that time is simple, he didn't always come back to camp every day. Sometimes he would train through the night even if I told him to stop, and other times he would just sleep in that clearing. Anyways when I saw Naruto looked exhausted I went and checked him out. The first thing I noticed was his hair. As you might have seen when he was in here, he has a few strands of red hair now. That was a side effect of Kaiubi's chakra mixing with his own, along with the other side effects I already told you about. I just learned about those later on. At that present time though, I questioned both of them extensively and learned about what had happened. They refused to elaborate further unfortunately, and I wasn't going to interrogate a little girl that helped get my apprentice into a clan full of powerful people to train him. So after I learned everything I could from them I asked what they planned to do from then on. Naruto immediately answered that he was staying there. I looked into his eyes, and those eyes had absolute resolve in them. They were the eyes of a man that made his decision and wouldn't back down no matter what. I really couldn't argue at that point in any way. The contract they made forced Naruto to stay with them for at least a year's time. I learned this little fact when I went to talk to the clan leader. This being said I immediately wanted to talk with the clan head, and that is exactly what I did. That same day I went and talked to him after being led to him by Akara and Naruto. I learned that to do the ritual to get lightning manipulation, as your main element you had to force it out of your body and then accept a blood oath with the clan head. Naruto did all of this, and by doing this he was unofficially merged into the clan as some sort of lesser clansman. 
This didn't deter Naruto though, if anything it made him more resolved to be the best he could be, and he strived to be the strongest and most skilled in the entire clan. After a lengthy talk with the leader of the clan, we came up with a compromise. He wouldn't let me stay in the clan compound as he didn't want their secrets getting out, but he would allow me to visit every month if I wanted. I grudgingly accepted, not that I had any choice in the matter though. So after saying my goodbye to Naruto and giving him a dozen or so scrolls on different training techniques and just as I left the compound and headed out to do my secondary objective and gain some information on Akatsuki. During this time I was able to gather very little sadly. Their group is composed of all S-rank missing nins of the top caliber. The leader I have no idea on who it is, but he has to be strong to be able to control and command other S-rank ninjas so well. As you already know Ichiha Itachi is one of said members. Then there's Hashigaki Kisum from Mist Village. The only other person I have been able to get information on is Dadara of Rock. He made a mistake and was seen with a black cloak with red clouds on it. Sadly that is all I've been able to gather. Tsunade could only stare at him the entire time through his explanation of what has happened the last two and a half years. She was far more interested in what happened to Naruto, but the information on Akatsuki was a nice bit of information nonetheless. Thank you Jiraiya, but please get back to Naruto. From what I gather you stop just after the three month mark, you still have two and a quarter years to explain. Jiraiya could only nod at her no silliness. As you wish, Hokage-sama. Besides my gathering of information on Akatsuki, I also made it a mission to visit Naruto as often as I could. Since I was only allowed onto the compound once every month I visited every month if I could. Sadly that didn't work out two of the times and I was held up for two months both those times. But when I did visit him I observed his daily training and his interactions with those of the clan. I was honestly surprised to see that Naruto and Akara hooked up together after I left the first time. From what I could gather they started dating and being an official couple a week after I left. His training was also spectacular. He was of course learning how to better manipulate his lightning chakra and I have to say, he was doing an amazing job. Just from the few hours I visited each time I was there, his control only got better and better each time. By the time 3 months had passed I would say that he was at a master lightning manipulator level. Thanks for watching my video, leave a like if you enjoyed my video, and also do consider subscribing to my channel for more awesome content. See you next time, till then sayonara.